Here on GMBM, we're pretty lucky to be able to ride our bikes in some amazing locations around the world, from the Rocky Mountains of North America to South Africa's Western Cape. We've raced, rode, and filmed some of the best trails in the world. So in this video, we're gonna revisit all of those epic places. The western coast of Canada is renowned for mountain biking and is where Freeride was born. Squamish is a small town slapped in between Vancouver and the mountain biking mecca Whistler. Neil visited Squamish in 2019 to experience the BC bike race which calls into town as the final stage of the 7 day brutal stage race. Now although it may not have chairlift accessible riding, it still has some of the best trails to offer in the world, with hundreds of trails weaving around the mountains. The climbs are built up of long, steep fire road climbs and single track to winch yourself to the top, making good use of all 12 of your gears. Upon summiting, you are rewarded with panoramic views of the valley for as far as the eye can see. Canada, in particular British Columbia, is known for its giant rock slabs and steep rooty chutes, but it is also famously known for its North Shore, which is not everyone's cup of tea. Nope. Nope. Ah, literally my least favourite thing in the world. If Double Black Diamond trails aren't your cup of tea, then they have a whole host of other trails, including Half Nelson, which is a machined trail littered with rollers and jumps. Rich joined the GMBN team with a pedigree of enduro racing under his belt, so we thought we'd chuck him in at the deep end and send him to Chile in South America to compete in the infamous Andes Pacifico. The Andes Pacifico is a stage race spread over five days, which sees the riders descend nearly 12,000 vertical meters by the time they finish. If they finish, that is. The previous year, fellow presenter Neil took on the task, but sadly ended his race early in hospital, so it was up to Rich to make us proud this year. The tracks are fast, long and rough, made even more epic by the breathtaking scenery surrounding the riders at all times. One thing that makes these trails stand out from the rest is the infamous anti-grip, which is like a layer of kitty litter that shifts unpredictably under your wheels. With speeds of up to 60 km an hour on some sections, it's definitely not the place to lose traction. To even just finish this race is an achievement, which you can tell from the look on Rich's face by the end. Whistler is a place that features on almost every mountain biker's bucket list. The bike park offers lift accessible downhill trails for all abilities, from green up to black graded trails, jumps, berms, rock slabs, you name it, it's in there. In fact, the mountains surrounding the village of Whistler are also littered with bike trails going on forever. This seemed like the perfect place for Martin to test out his canyon sender with a modified bucket seat. And a 13 hour flight later, and the whole GMBN crew were across the pond and had arrived in the land of mountain biking. With nerves playing up on Martin's mind on the gondola line, some words of wisdom from Blake soon settled him down. Um, 264 my shorts, 264 my shorts. I'm pretty scared. I'm that kind of scared. That's natural. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah. You don't want to not be scared. You want to be scared. Yeah, you want to be scared. With so much anticipation and build up, there was a lot of pressure riding on Martin being able to actually ride this specifically built bike down the trails. It was time to drop in, and Blake out front, Doddy following behind, Martin hit the trails as if he'd been down them a million times. Yeah, Mark. <laughs> So good. <laughs> yes, yes. First bit done. Dude, that was amazing. <laughs> Welcome to Whistler, mate. Wound in the hair. It's so good. From then on, it was go time. Competing in the A line downhill race, sessioning some of the Lost Lake trails, and experiencing all that Whistler had to offer. What a trip!
Dark Vest is the brainchild of UK freerider Sam Reynolds, alongside Nico Vink and Clemens Cordula, taking place in the wine region of Stellenbosch, South Africa, with the mountains as the perfect backdrop for some of the biggest jumps in the world. With jumps ranging from 40 feet in length up to 90 feet, these aren't for the faint hearted. Which is why we sent our resident stuntman Blake Sampson out there in 2018. With a mixture of hips, jumps and shark fins, you not only have to be confident to hit the line, but also possess the skills to finesse your way through the line. Surrounded by 10 or so of the best riders in the world, Blake set about getting through the line. More importantly, the 90 foot monster jump in the middle of the course. I know I keep saying this word, nervous. But this is a whole new level of nervousness. Judging the speed was the hard bit. Too slow and cased. Too fast and you risk overshooting. What is already a 90 foot jump? Following the creator of this completely mental line, Sam Reynolds, helped Blake judge the speed and got him over it safely. Oh my f me, dude. That was sick. It was game on from there. Huge tricks like backflips, supermans, and even a cash roll from Nikolai Rogatkin. Blake did us proud and even bought us a bottle of Red Home. Cheers, Blake. This one is a little closer to home for us, especially for Neil. Shropshire is where he grew up. So Neil and Blake planned a route around the rolling hills to enjoy the best of British autumn. Sampling some of the long winding single track that the hills of Shropshire have to offer was top of the list. It wasn't long before the heavens opened and they really found out how waterproof their jackets were. Starting off on open hillsides, bombing down flat out descents to ducking into dense woods to avoid the rain, weaving turns around trees and natural rollers to jump spiced up the ride. Just as they got used to the rain, the sun decided to come out for the final descent of the day and it couldn't have come at a better time. A steep, loose, rocky descent came between them and the finish, so they carefully picked their way down to an epic day out. The diverse terrain and microclimates meant that they managed to experience every type of trail and weather condition. Not bad for one day out on a bike. Neil again! This time we sent him with GCM presenter Cy Richardson to the mystic world of Iceland, with volcanoes, lava fields and thousands and thousands of kilometres of gravel roads. It was going to be like nothing they had ever ridden before. The route was 130 kilometres split over two days that would see all four elements, earth, wind, water and fire. Starting on snow, they made their way through towering mountains, active volcanoes and ice cold river crossings. With surroundings that could quite easily be mistaken for the surface of Mars, they made their way to the overnight hut to replenish their lost vitamins and minerals with beer and steak. The second day saw Neil and Cy crossing deserted highland plains to the base of a gruelling climb, made all the harder with a consistent headwind. And just to add to the tension, Iceland's most active volcano was next to them and was about to erupt any time. Luckily, they made it back onto Tarmek and even managed to dip in the hot springs before they headed home. Back to South America again, this time in Patagonia to sample some of the local trails, coffee and in Blake's case, fly fishing. To host them was an ex-World Cup downhill rider turned fly fisher named Gabo. With the much appreciated help from a minivan on steroids, they set off into the backcountry of Patagonia. Day one involved a traverse around three lakes to a small hut in the middle of nowhere crossing through vast grazing plains with cattle and horses to accompany them. It was pretty apparent they weren't in the UK anymore. Dusty, weaving single track fired them through thick walls of trees on either side, slashing through the dirt as if it was a layer of fresh snow.
Riding until 8pm, they got to the hut for some well-deserved beers and barbecue. Some strong coffee was needed the next morning after beer, wine and pisco in order to get the lads out of bed. Day 2 definitely looked a bit more relaxed. A lift to another riding location, a climb and a long descent down to a river for fly fishing. Maybe it had something to do with all the drinks the night before, but a lunch stop at the top of the climb made for the picture perfect place to watch the clouds roll over the hills and have a much needed rest. A mixture of open grassy fields and rough raw rocks saw them pick their way down to the river. It was fishing time. Time for Blake to impress the pros. Poised with a rod, Blake cast off. Oh, come on. Let's go. <laughs> No fish this time, but I think they'll survive. So there you have it, GMBN's favourite riding places in the world. We've been really lucky to visit some of these locations and we hope to take you with us next time. So make sure you take this opportunity to subscribe if you're on YouTube and love, like and follow on all the social platforms. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.